earlier. In the previous lecture, we discussed chemical shifts and shielding. In the previous lecture, we examined a chemical shift and the shielding effect that results because of a high electron density. So basically, we said that whenever we have a hydrogen atom and around that hydrogen atom we have a very high electron density, we have a lot of electrons, well in that case, that very high electron density will basically shield the nucleus of that hydrogen atom from the external magnetic field. And that means that a greater strength of magnetic field will be needed to actually induce or create a chemical shift of that particular hydrogen atom. And that will place that hydrogen atom relatively upfield along the x-axis of the proton NMR spectrum. So in this and the next lecture, we're we're going to discuss some of the groups that basically either act to shield or de-shield those hydrogen atoms. So let's begin with alkanes. So alkanes are basically carbon-hydrogen containing molecules that contain single carbon-carbon bonds. So saturated alkanes contain a lot of neighboring H atoms. They have a great density of H atoms and this means there is a very high density of electrons. So let's take a look at the following particular alkane. So we have these three methyl groups and each one of these carbons contains three H atoms and each one of those H atoms has its own electron density. And so we have a great deal of electron density around this molecule and each one of these H atoms will experience a shielding effect. And that shielding effect will cause these H atoms to appear far to the right on our proton NMR spectrum and that means they will appear relatively upfield. So alkanes tend to have very well shielded hydrogen nuclei. Now what about alkenes? So basically alkenes such as the one shown here contain pi bonds. We have double bonds between our carbons. In this case we have two carbons. We have the double bond, the sigma and pi bond, and we have two H atoms on each side. Now each one of these H atoms or H atoms that are attached directly to the carbon-carbon double bond are known as olefinic hydrogens. So olefinic hydrogens are those hydrogens which are attached directly to carbon-carbon double bonds. Now these hydrogens appear relatively low field. So they don't appear upfield but downfield. And this is, and this is so for two primary reasons. Now one of these reasons is described in this diagram. So basically, let's take this molecule and redraw this molecule using electron densities. So we have the nuclei of the two carbon atoms shown by these relatively large red spheres. Now this is the sigma bond shown by this electron density. This is the pi bond and basically these two electron densities overlap to form our pi bond. Now these are the four nuclei of of the hydrogen atoms. So we have one coming out from this side, one coming out from this side, and these two are going into the board. So let's induce or let's actually create our external magnetic field. So when our external magnetic field B0 acts on our molecule inside the proton NMR spectrometer, notice that when this points this way, the electron density will basically tend to create or induce its own magnetic field that will tend to oppose our magnetic field at this location. So if the external mag if the external magnetic field is going upward, this magnetic field induced by this electron density will point downward. So it will create the following circular motion because our electron will fluctuate accordingly. So here the magnetic field induced points downward, but here it points upward. And the H atoms, these olefinic H atoms, appear here and not here. So that means if we examine 
examine the net magnetic field here, we take the sum of these two magnetic fields and that will give us the net magnetic field. So actually, the net magnetic field for these particular H atoms will be greater and that means such alkenes will act to basically de-shield or decrease the shielding of these particular H atoms. So once again, when the external magnetic field B0 is turned on, it will cause the electron density of the alkene to create its own induced magnetic field that will oppose the external magnetic field. And that's why in this position, they are opposite. However, it will tend to increase the net magnetic field at the position of our olefinic hydrogens. So basically because we have a fluctuating magnetic field that's shown here at the location of our two H's and here as well, we have our induced magnetic field that points upward in the same direction as this external magnetic field. And so we add them and the net is a greater value than our initial external magnetic field. So we see that therefore such hydrogens will require a smaller magnetic field to cause resonance, to cause that chemical shift. And so they will appear downfield and this is known as a de-shielding effect. So here we have a shielding taking place. Here we have a de-shielding taking place. Now we mentioned earlier that there are two reasons for the low field, the relatively down field. Now the second reason has to do with the fact that these bonds are sp2 hybridized. So sp2 hybridized bonds are bonds that contain a relatively large character, S character. And remember, the greater the S character is, the more likely that the carbons will pull that electron density. So basically, these carbons pull the electron density of these H atoms and that D shields our, uh, and that D shields our magnetic field around these H atoms. Now let's discuss alkynes. So alkynes are basically carbon hydrogen containing molecules that contain a triple bond. So let's examine the following diagram that basically describes our two carbons which are attached via a triple bond. So all this electron density basically describes our triple bond between these two carbons. And these are our two H atoms, one attached to each one of the carbons. And notice they basically lie along the same exact linear axis. Now, in such a case, unlike here, when we actually create this external magnetic field which points upward, once again our electron density will create or induce its own magnetic field that will oppose our initial external magnetic field. But now, our H atoms are not found in these positions, but they lie along the same direction as this magnetic field. And so our induced magnetic field will point this way and so since our two um, H atoms are found on these positions when we take the sum we actually get a smaller net magnetic field. So the net magnetic field in this case is this minus the induced and that basically means in this case we have not a de-shielding taking place but rather we have a shielding taking place. So basically Basically, we have a greater electron density which basically induces a magnetic field which decreases the net magnetic field and so we have to bump up or increase the magnetic field to cause a chemical shift for these particular two H atoms. And that means such H atoms attached to triple bonds between our carbon will basically appear relatively upfield. So this will create a shielding effect. So once again, the situation for hydrogens attached to carbon-carbon triple bonds is different than in the alkene case. Here, the hydrogen atoms are directly in front of the external magnetic field and so the induced magnetic field will act to decrease the net magnetic field and we get this equation. So in this case, the symmetry, the structure of our molecule is different than in this case, we see that the 
these are coming out of the board, these are going into the board, but here they lie along the same axis, along let's say this vertical axis. And so as this goes up, the induced goes down, and the net is a smaller magnetic field. So therefore, these hydrogens will be located relatively off field because they will require a higher magnetic field to cause the chemical shift and so, and so we have a shielding effect taking place. So once again, alkene or alkanes create a shielding effect, alkenes create a de-shielding effect, and alkynes create a shielding effect. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss some important electron withdrawing properties of certain groups.